Hey, what's up guys? A lot has happened this year. We hit a huge milestone going from 1,000 subscribers to well over 200,000 subscribers. We also got the silver play button. My daughter Leah was born and that was a huge adjustment for me. I learned a lot by making and also sharing those projects with you guys and thank you for being a part of that movement. Hope we can accomplish even more this year. And with that being said, I'm going to hit the rewind button and show you guys some of the projects from 2016. And I have all the links down in the video description if you guys want to check those out. And this was the very first build of the year. I had family coming in town and I downsized my office so that I could make room to make this bed. Um, what's nice about this bed is that it folds down and it also folds out of the way so it gives me more space in the office and when family come in town, I can let the bed down and they'll have a place to stay. Now so much happened during the course of the year, I did not get around to finishing this bed. I need to also replace the flooring as well so I figure I'll wait till I replace the flooring before I finish up the bed and this should be done in a few months. Now there's a ton of questions about this build and I'll address all those questions in the next video pertaining to this build. I will also have plans for this bed as well and I wouldn't change anything about this bed because I built it around the spot it's in. And next up we have this concrete candle holder. First time doing a concrete project and I really like the way this one came out. It's a mixture of wood and concrete epoxy together. Now I did receive a ton of requests to make more stuff like this and I will so can expect a lot of this kind of stuff next year more easy to do projects. A friend of mine is a huge fan of the Cleveland Indians and wanted me to remake a yard sign that they had and that one was a bit weathered and I decided that sure I just remake it I give it a shot and this was the outcome I think it came out pretty well. Now space is always a problem for a lot of us. I needed something that I can fold up and something that I can put away. And that's why I made this folding assembly workbench, a single sheet of plywood with a couple two by twos, inserted some T-Tracks and a custom painted logo on it. And this is my version of a modern clock. Super simple build, attach two pieces of wood together, ordered a clock mechanism and that was it. A couple of viewers did remake this and had their own touch to it and man I was really impressed with the way those came out. Now to me this was probably one of my funnest projects that I've worked on. It was very time consuming. I also learned a lot along the way and I ran into a few hiccups along the way as well um, just due to my inexperience with skateboards. Now the skateboard was wrapped with a battery powered LED set and what's nice about this is there's a power switch to turn on the LED but if you feel like you're careless and you don't want to be turning the switch on and off I designed this so once you step on the skateboard you can then initiate the circuit and then turn the skateboard on and off and this is also a way to save the batteries. You can also change the modes on the LED so if you're not into the flashing stuff you can always set a solid color. Now with the reduction in my office space, obviously I got rid of my large desk I had and at this point I had to remake something that fits the space, something that I can have as a custom piece and fits my needs. Um, this was probably one of the most fun I've had in any project because I wasn't sure on what I was getting into but the end result was amazing to me and I like the outcome of it, it really fits my needs.
This was more of a problem solving project and I just wanted an easier way to give the dog a bath. The way this one was constructed, nothing is glued because I wanted the ability to break it down when it's not in use. If I did have a bigger space to leave it, I would probably just leave it up as it is and just leave a water hose to it so I can just walk up to it and give the dog a bath, but that's not the situation I'm in. And I just made it so that I can break it down real fast and just store it. And next up we have another pet project and I'll never forget this project probably ever because this was the day that my daughter was born and I was in the middle of making this and I had to take off and rush to the hospital. Now this project gave me the ability to store the dog food as well as a feeding station. I did integrate a light switch that when the door is open I can get some light. Now when I first made this shelf, a lot of viewers and still to the day have concerns about the height of this shelf and wondering why did I place it at this height. In my eyes it's a decorative piece that just sits in a room, it's in the family room, there's a ton of seating around this area so it never crossed my mind that someone would actually sit on this and it still doesn't cross my mind someone would sit on it because it's under a TV and I use it to store things on it. The number one reason for making this shelf was to hide the TV remotes and some other remotes that I had in this area. Adding the LEDs was for pure entertainment purpose only and you'll see what I mean if I get the opportunity to shoot the house tour this upcoming year. And next up we have the pallet backsplash for my laundry room, the low traffic area, but I still want it to look good. I did not want to see my utility hoses and all those things, so I made this backsplash and you can check the video out to see how I made it step by step, but this actually solved my problem and I was able to make those unsightly things disappear. And falling at number 17, we have this outdoor chair. Love the design on this one. Very cheap to make, just your regular two by four, painted and stained. Can't wait to make more chairs. This was actually the first and only chair I ever made. So I'm looking to experiment more and get into more things this upcoming year. Also, I did get requests. Viewers want to see what this would actually look like in a sofa form. And even though I made it as an outdoor chair, it's not meant to be out in the weather. I keep it under a covered area and it actually is holding up very well. The only thing I would change about this chair is the way that I have the 2x4 running along the seating. I would have actually had it to match the back. And next up we have this drink table. This was a viewer's request. The instruction was to make it match the chair that I previously made and I did just that. And since drinks are intended to sit on this, I'm gonna add a couple layers of polyurethane and this should protect the surface from the water. This could also support a laptop or anything that's under 25 pounds. Now whether it's at my job or I'm at home, I always have to make decisions and since I couldn't make my mind up on what I wanted to do in a certain space, I made this temporarily accent table which I'm going to use that as a TV stand to temporarily hold the TV while I figure that space out. Now this was a very simple project, only took a day to make it and I'm still liking it till today and I'll probably eventually hand that off or donate it once I'm done with it. Now after making all these things, you guys made me aware that you don't have all the tools to make all this stuff. So that's when I decided to create the limited tool series where I show you guys how to start making tools and jigs to get the job done. 
So I made a video explaining all the basic tools I think you need to start building and this was the first addition to the limited series. And with this build, I made a set of tracks which I routed tracks into it. And when you add your circular saw, you call it a track saw. Now with the intention of the track, it guides the saw to make a straight cut and they also give you the ability to rip plywood or any feasible lumber. And this build was also another viewer's request. I made a modern planter box and I used cedar wood. Cedar is insects resistance and it also hold up very well in the weather. I added a few plants, dressed it up with some river rocks and that gave it a really nice touch and what made the project stand out even more. In this build, I made a display case, hoping to give you guys some ideas if you have some valuables that you can store in a case similar to this or you can have your own touch to it. On my wish list, I want my closet to have some cool designs in it and I just want to be able to have a spot that I can put something valuable to me in that case. Now, even though I may or may not display my shoes in it, this was really to give you guys an idea on some things that you can possibly do if you wanted to make a display case. Now I actually try to find value in everything I see. While I was at work, I saw these leftover salad bowls that I grabbed because I had a feeling that I had some ideas for it in the future and this will actually turned out. I made a fire bowl out of these bowls and the project actually came out nice. I was really surprised on the outcome of how nice it was. After mixing the concrete and letting that sit for a few days, I was able to come back and sand the bowl at this point. I added a wire mesh to support the black marbles which was used as a decorative touch to the fire bowl. I used gel fuel in the can as a source to my fire. If you like more information on any of these builds in this video, be sure to check the video description and you'll be able to find individual links back to each video. And next up you have your Max Cut 2, another addition to the Limited Tool Series. And what this is, this is a jig that lets you get multiple uses out of your circular saw, whether it's 45 degree cuts, whether it's repetitive cuts. And with this exact build, you can cut up to 22 inches in width. Now what's nice about this jig is you don't need a lot of space to store it. And I also show you how to make this using a circular saw and very limited hand tools. So you don't need a ton of tools to make this. With the stop blocks, you're able to make small cuts and multiple small cuts repetitively. And also you can make four to five degree cuts. So it's great for making picture frames, and my most challenging project so far, cutting a lot of angles to make this simple looking bookshelf. I really took a chance with the design. I thought it was a bold color to go with, but I'm totally happy with it, the way it came out. And I did see a few comments and they said this should probably be in a doctor office because it actually looks like a heartbeat. And <laughs> it does, but I'm still happy with the results on this one. I think it was bold and I think it accomplished exactly what I had drawn up on paper. And without actually breaking the shelf, I'm not sure on the weight capacity of the shelf. Um, I do know it's strong enough to hold anything that I want to place on top of it. And it's also a good idea to secure any shelf that you place high. And next up, we have the concrete lamp. And besides my computer desk, this is the most used item in the house that we actually use on a day to day basis. So the design is super simple. Just Core the lights up and place a vase on top of the concrete base and plug them in and with the remote control you can then turn the lights on and off. And next up we have this very simple DIY Decker shelf that you can basically make this with very limited hand tools even though I use my miter saw it just makes the job faster but you can totally do this with a hand saw. And to make this, I use a two by four and this two by four is actually two inch by four inches and then trim the branch down to fit the opening, then attach some picture frame hardware on the back and this is what we'll use to hang it on the wall.
Now I'm mainly a digital person, not a huge fan of paper, but I do collect magazines from time to time because there's certain things that you want to read and you just rather have physically in your hand. So I made a magazine rack that actually holds on to those and keep them out of the way. That way it doesn't take up any space on my limited space bookshelf. I also made a low profile modern coffee table. This was a weekend project for me. Start on a Friday night and finish on a Saturday. Depending on your experience, it could take two or three days to make it. And being that the table looks so simple, I added fabric to the bottom and this actually gave it a more of an expensive look. And also adding the legs to it definitely gave it a better touch. And falling at number four, I showed you how to make a homemade table saw using simple pieces of wood, all limited tools to make this. And also you can take your circular saw, turn that into a table saw, take your jigsaw and turn that into a scroll saw. And with this current setup, I showed you how to add a trim router to an insert. You can add any router you need to. And also you have a downdraft insert and this gives you the ability to collect some of the sanding dust from getting into the air. You're not going to stop all of it but you'll get a good portion of it down in your vacuum. This also functions as a workstation so you can get work done on top of the workbench and also a separate area to store all your inserts. So if you're new to the channel you've never seen this video before. I'll show you step by step how you can make each individual insert, add the power cord to it and also how to install the vacuum port so that you can collect dust. I'll also show you how to add the electrical and to give you different options of your electric setup. And at number three we have a follow up video to the table saw and that is a table saw fence and I showed you step by step how you can make this exact table saw fence for your table saw. Now as promised there will be other additions to the table saw so stay tuned for those that will be coming up in the upcoming year. And number two is a two part video how I made this doghouse and also how to add the landscaping around the doghouse. A lot of the material I got for the doghouse I got it on clearance so it didn't cost a ton of money to make the doghouse I believe I spent on the 80 bucks to build this entire doghouse and their landscaping actually cost more money to make than actually the doghouse. So I kind of spoiled the dog a little bit. I gave the dog some synthetic lawn on one side of the doghouse and I'm adding sand into the synthetic lawn and what that does is weigh the grass down, hold it in place. I also added rocks around the doghouse just to give it a clean and nice modern look to the doghouse. And last but not least, the last project of the year, a modern desk lamp. This one was made completely from simple hand tools and a drill. And I did this as a challenge just to prove and show that this can actually be done with less tools. Yeah, it may take a little more work, but the possibilities are there. And if you have other tools or more bigger tools, power tools, then you can totally get this done um, by following the same instructions and just using your power tools and that would make it go a lot faster.